good news is that as of uh, 9 30 when i left the office we have one new case in the last 10 days uh, unfortunately that case was in a nursing home but uh, so far just the one isolated case really trying to determine where she would have been exposed at this point in time so we're that's part of our ongoing uh, contact tracing so i think we're, we're really trending in the right direction i i, I have said this privately I, I think i can say it publicly now that in my opinion that we peaked in Marion County the weekend of April the 7th when we had a spike in cases. I think we went from, my nurse left at four o'clock on Saturday till we came in, well, until uh, Monday morning, we spiked, had eight cases. Uh, since then, we've been trending zero, one, two. We've had no more than two in any one day. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with where we are in terms of leveling off. Um, and as all of you know, we have met with Tom to start looking at some reopening of some government uh, functions as well as others. Um, I think it's time to do that. I mean, I, everyone has their opinion. I understand that and I respect that. But what we have got to do is continue to do things in a slow, systematically, methodically way to ensure the safety of both employees and customers and clients. And we can do that. It's just a matter of found, finding the, the balance to do that. So the other thing is in terms of the grants, uh, I, I can announce to you that I got my notification yesterday. We applied for $80,501 grant and we got it. Um, to support our efforts around COVID-19. Um, so that, as all grants do, come with a lot of stipulations. One of the things that we could do with that, that we can't do with other uh, sources of revenue is pay overtime. And we chose to, to pay overtime to our staff that's, that's doing unbelievably phenomenal work. Uh, we're talking pretty much seven days a week, multiple hours a day, far greater than, than the eight. Uh, so uh, we're going to get half of that in this fiscal year, the other half in the last fiscal year. That, are you, that is a year's grant, but what I did, I, I basically earmarked all of it for 15 weeks. Now the reason I would do 15 weeks as opposed to 52 is my honest opinion is that I think the further we go, we're going to decrease in terms of time and effort toward that particular um, pandemic. So I would rather get the money up front and use it all and then we'll worry about the other part later on. If I don't do that, if we proportion those out each month, then when we get into the lower months where we're not gonna be putting much time and effort into it, there's a possibility that we would leave money on the table. I like the commission, I'm not willing to do that. So we'll spend it and, and get it, and then I think we'll be okay in, in the future with that. So um, I mean, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. I would just say one thing, we have 45 cases, 58,000 people on the county. I would say congratulations, you've done a hell of a job. Yeah, I've had to uh, yeah. echo those uh, compliments too. Yeah. What a great job you've done and uh, keeping everybody informed and the hours you spent. That is incredible. Being a long time member of the health department, I know what kind of person you are, and the dedication you have uh, in this crisis like this, and uh, the tireless uh, long hours you put in. And uh, the results are that it's good to see. It flattening out. It's good to see that we're getting to be in a position we can open a few things up and uh, cautiously, slowly, like you said, methodically, it all makes sense. But uh, appreciate it, the good the job you've done, like Gary said, and Rick, we, as a commission, we thank you. Well, you know, I, I always appreciate those kind of comments, and uh, I, I would have to tell you, um, stressful. Lloyd, if I could ask you a question. Least, but I've got a wonderful staff that just, it's that they go above and beyond. Um, you know, I, I'd have to show you my phone to let you know the, the, the late <laughs> night, late that. evening calls, the late night calls. <laughs> but you know, I've said time and time again, it's an honor and privilege to serve our citizens. The one thing I will always do is put the health and safety of our citizens first above anything and everything else, no matter what other opinions may be. Um, so we've got a really great staff that's just going above and beyond. And I've said time and time again, I wouldn't trade our staff for any. So they're doing a phenomenal job too. Thank you for those comments, appreciate it. I think one of the first things that we want to do is replenish the uh, what we've taken from our not only set of our, our stockpile of supplies and stuff. I know we've uh, depleted a lot of things up there, and I don't know where we're at there as far as dollar wise, but I think that's kind of high on our priority list to do that and then look to see where we can spend the rest of it and, 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 the, and the overtime things we're allowed to spend it for. I, I agree with that. I think. Uh, you know, I've said, again, I know I sound like sometimes a broken record, but I have to say time and time again that I think our county was, was well positioned, uh, more so than any county in the state, to be able to handle the pandemic. And I think the actions that we have done, the supplies that we've had, we've distributed, kind of proves that point. 
Um, so, you know, I, I think replenishing those supplies to allow us to hopefully plan for the next pandemic that I hope doesn't come will, will better position us to make sure that our citizens are taken care of. Lloyd, what do you see the role of the health department in businesses, companies, restaurants, churches that want to uh, open? Are there any restrictions or guidelines that you would like to offer the people that are watching and for the newspaper? Yeah, there are several guidelines. And, and what we'll do is we'll take a look at what the governor's executive orders are. Uh, now keep in mind that our Board of Health, we have some executive orders in place um, that run in, in addition to what the governor did that at this point in time, I'm not even thinking about relaxing those. So one of them is, and I'll just share this with you, one of them is restricted alcohol sales to in-state customers only. Um, and we did that when Pennsylvania closed their liquor stores. We had an influx of folks coming down to buy liquor. And it was just creating, in my opinion, it was creating too much of a uh, risk category that we, we just didn't want to deal with or didn't need to deal with. And again, uh, to restrict those sales kind of protected our citizens again. So I'm not even gonna think about re really you know, relaxing those for a long time. But we have worked with the, the, the restaurants. We have spent uh, days with my staff going around to different businesses, explaining to them what they can and can't do in order to make sure that not only the employees, but the clients are safe. So we'll continue to work with our restaurants and other businesses to make sure that they sure. Uh, comply with the codes and, and again, uh, to make sure everybody's safe. Thank you. And Lloyd, also in addition to a pandemic or whatever, we also have used lost supplies up there for major floods that occur, I mean, in Mankin and in, out towards Monog, we've always had the, you know, some huge floods. We, Taking a lot of supplies, and we've used uh, cases and cases and pallets of water for different situations. So uh, it needs replenished during so often anyway, not just because of something serious that's happened this time, but a lot of the things you keep up there that, that uh, we need are used for other terrible things that happen in Marion County also. It's pretty much when you look at our supplies, we have things that other counties don't have. I mean, we can set up portable. Um, facilities we've got cots we've got a lot of stuff that other counties don't have but i think the one thing that this pandemic pretty much has taught us is that we can inventory what we have and maybe there's some things that we have that we really don't need that we could you know free up room for the things that we do need i think ppe is always going to be a high priority need no matter what the pandemic may be and it just so happens this is respiratory so if we have one that deals with contact but our goal is to sit down and just see what we do need to moving forward to make sure we have uh, available PPE for whatever pandemic we may have. The sum is going to be universal. The issue of dealing with the uh, uh, homeless, the unsheltered uh, people, and the role of testing. Can you share a little bit about that and how the testing is going? Is it still in operation? How long will it continue? Testing is still continuing. Um, now, again, that's another good point, I think, for us. We, over the last two weeks, we have seen the request for tests decrease dramatically. So we have changed our hours from three to six. Now we run it from three to five. Okay. And one of the reasons why we did that is, is those who uh, were approved for testing, they typically came early. So within the first hour, hour and a half, we were really busy. Then it gets kind of tailored off after that. So again, when time is a premium, in order for us to make the best use of our time, we decreased, we compressed that last hour. Um, but no one was going into it, but, but yet we maintain the fluidity so we can expand that or contract it as, as need be. So testing is still continuing. The requests are for tests are lessening, which is a good thing. And where, how many places in Marion County are being offered as test sites as far as you know right now? The only test site that I'm aware of is the test site that we're doing in conjunction with Mon General Hospital over on Oaks Avenue. I was reading where CVS and Walgreens are going to begin doing that as well. You heard that? I'd heard that like probably a month ago, but I don't know where they are in their process. Okay. Um, and, and again, when we look at testing, um, okay. it has to be an FDA approved test to make sure that it's valid. And there are a lot of, I'll just share with you, we, we had to go out and close one of our, you know, work with the state in terms of uh, uh, closing one of our labs that was doing antibody testing from an unapproved source. Uh -huh. Scary, but we can't allow any company to take advantage of our citizens at any point in time uh, even more so even now. So, right, thank you. so we're, we're kind of monitoring those who's doing testing, make sure it's a proof test. How's everybody holding up? Well, <laughs> ready for a vacation, but um, <laughs> you know, um, it's stressful. I mean, I, I, I would be less than honest if I told you that it wasn't stressful, but it's okay. It's, it's where we are and we just have to deal with it and make the best decisions that we can using science, um, 30 yeah. years of infectious disease epidemiology and common sense. Mm -hmm. If we apply those things, we'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.